Hello and welcome to another episode of Atomic Vinyl Reviews. My name is Jacob and today we've got another unboxing video. And um, I'm slightly concerned about this here box. It's not quite meant to be this dented, I think. So, fingers crossed whatever the hell is in here is in okay sh condition because this is... Th this is not okay. This box did not go through the best treatment whatsoever. I, for the life of me, can't fathom what they were trying to do with this thing. Anyhow, this package comes to us from Singapore. So, if I'm correct, we should have some Marmot figures, uh, which I'm really excited about, because it's not every day I get a Marmot figure. So let's dive right into this one. Oh, jeez, this box. All right, okay, well, we'll cut it from under here. Hopefully, I'm just... I mean, these figures shouldn't be super fragile, in all honesty, but damn, this box. Let's have a look. There's at least some bubble wrap, so that should help. We got that going on in here. What have we got? Okay. One of them here. And the other one here. Very sweet. I also think there should be a little knick-knack or... Here we go. And a little knick-knack. So... <laughs> that's about it. Let's open these up. And see if they are okay. So, all of these are Gigan figures today. I just happened to stumble up upon somebody selling these for a pretty reasonable price on eBay. Now, the thing about these Marmot figures is... I don't really know too much about them, to be honest. I just kind of know that they're fairly expensive, sort of more artsy, sort of stylish vinyl figures. So they can get super expensive. They got this like cool sort of almost like vintage toy aesthetic to them, which I really dig. They up to now only have one Marmot figure, which is this 2000 Godzilla Millennium figure here done in this lovely metallic blue with nice purple and silver detailing across his body and spines. Uh, I freaking love this thing. Uh, I hope the color is... I don't know, the color is not quite coming out right today on my video. I don't know why. No matter what I do messing with the settings, it seems a bit iffy. But yeah, he's a, a really nice, nice figure here. I kind of love the aesthetic of these things, especially all those metallic colors that they use in a lot of their figures. So this is really exciting, because these things are quite difficult to get. So this one is really fun because this is the Final Wars Gigan. Not only that, but this is the Final Wars Gigan with chainsaw hands. Done in marmot form and it's all nice and big and everything. So this is going to be great, assuming it's in one piece, considering the box was a freaking nightmare. But looks to be pretty damn good. Okay. There he is. Oh, This guy is nice. The paint on him feels sticky in some places, which I'm not digging, but the actual figure itself, the sculpt, the nice chainsaws, his expression, looking pretty cool. Look at this guy. This guy's big. That is sweet. So this guy's much less flashy than your typical marmot, where they're very much super metallic-y, super, you know, bright and in-your-face, kind of like this dude here. You can scale them up. He's actually quite a bit bigger than this guy, which is cool. Especially with all his frills and bells and whistles and all that armament and stuff. Look at that. He's got a nice little tail there. His little grappling thing on the end. His metallic little claws. Love the... The chainsaw they have going down them. It's done in this sort of nice metallic-y, very dark blue gray color. So surprisingly very muted tones on this guy, which most of these figures of this guy have muted tones. But like even compared to, say, the Bandai vinyl, which is already quite a dark version of the figure or character, you can see the tones are really muted on this guy. But it does make his uh, visor pop, which is really cool. That is really sweet. I'm digging him. Look at that. 
His, fin his uh, fins here are quite dark as well, and they're kind of tacky. Uh, the paint is kind of leaving a stickiness, which I don't like. But they are sculpted really well. All put in there really nicely. All, ah, very, very nicely made. Very cool. And this is my only Gigan 2004 version with the chainsaw hands, because I was an idiot and I sold my Monster Arts figure many years ago. I don't know why I did that. Very stupid decision, but I should have kept it. There you go. This is how big he scales up next to a typical 6-inch Bandai figure. I can also bring in a 6-inch Bandai Gigan here from the Showa era. You can tell that this guy's quite a bit bigger, which I really dig. Really cool. Love his face. Look at that. Very stylized, very, very well made. He's got all the little details that the Chainsaw Gigan had that the regular one didn't, like the uh, different neck plating. So they fixed up his neck and the different kind of texturing on, on his uh, mandibles and his horn here. So that's really good. Got his chainsaw there. There is a bit of a flush or whatever it's called between the materials here, so not fully as free as they could be, but for a vinyl figure like this, done pretty well. Got his body going down here, all that detail work, that kind of biomechanical HR Giger kind of style-esque stuff, which is really sweet about this version of Gigan. Really cool. It's a big tail. Nice. I love all the spikes down here that are nice and... Yeah, they actually... They're not molded into one piece of plastic, which is the difference between this guy and, say, a Bandai vinyl or the Playmates figure that came out recently also had stuff like that going on. So this one's really cool. They're actually loose bits, although... They, they do stylize it a bit. I think this tail is a bit shorter than it should be, but the rest of the figure is actually surprisingly accurate to how it was in the film, which I really like. I also really like the teeth in there and his mouth. So let's uh, dive into figure number two, which is going to be the Showa Gigan done in Marmot form. Uh, this one, I, I say this about everything, but I am super excited about this one because... I'm a huge fan of the Showa Gigan, and this looks like a really sweet figure of him. Just like a really elegant design done in this way, you know? Gigan has such a striking design. I have always loved Gigan. He's so, so such a creative, striking design. Just this weird bird-like creature, <laughs> but with all these biomechanical details to him. It's really cool. Here is the Marmot Gigan. Actually, let's see if these guys say anything under their feet, because they should, you know, say stuff. It does say Marmot 2002, uh, 1972 Tohoko LTD, and Gigan in Japanese. You can see that there. It just says Marmot 2002. But look at him! Again, really chunky figure, and I love the face on this guy. The face and the coloring is really cool. Ah, oh, look at that. I love all the... They got, like, extra silver detailing on them, stuff like that. All oh, really nice. I think a little bit of the gold the gold detailing on them uh, could have been done a touch better, particularly it's a little splotch. Like, right there, where you have the green coming through under the gold. They could have touched that up. Other than that, I really dig the paint on this thing. Oh, they actually didn't paint the undersides of his claws either, they kind of just airbrush the top, which, you know, whether they did that for laziness or stylistic reasons, I don't know, but it does kind of have a nice highlight under them because of that. That's still cool anyway. This one's actually surprisingly accurate to how he was in the film, all things considered. Uh, but yeah, it is a little bit of a simplified form of him. Like if we, again, bring in the little 6-inch Bandai Japan Gigan, from the Showa era here, you can compare the two. So I, this one is actually a lot more accurate, I'd say. But uh, really similar in a lot of ways as well. Really cool. I uh, love, love again the red visor on him. And the little, just the silver details on his face. Just the, the curves of this guy, so elegant. Love this thing. Again, has that sort of like vintage toy kind of a vibe that these Marmite figures tend to have. But uh, it really suits this character, I'd say. It really does. So if we bring in a uh, Godzilla here, our Godzilla 2002, or oh, 2000 I mean, Millennium figure, sorry. 
they stand pretty much eye to eye, which is very nice. So this guy is very well scaled with your other Marmot figures, assuming they are still, you know, scaled well with this guy to begin with. There they are from the front, the sides, the back. <laughs> very cool. I can also bring in a little Reveltech guy again. A little baby Reveltech guy again. Now this guy fetches a pretty penny as well these days, but I'm really happy I got him. And yeah, there are a nice little pair of these two. Two very different figures. I hope we get a Monster Arts guy again. Uh, Showa guy again. It's really about time. I don't know. Hopefully. <laughs> but uh, this is so cool. So this one's actually got more detailing on him. These little Reveltech figures actually have really sick detailing, but the ball joints are kind of very obvious on these, which has always been a, a little bit of a shame. But you can kind of get a good sense of the detailing. He's also got really, really fierce blades on his chest. They're much longer than I think they were in the movie. <laughs> but you can compare them to this guy here. I can have a nice close look at those details. Again, it is a very simple figure, but it's just so elegant. And of course, made of a hollow hard vinyl, like you would expect. Has some articulation in his head here. And his head, his arms move. You can probably do 360 with those. His legs also move like this. And there's a little swivel in his tail here. Just to give you guys an idea. I guess you can 360 that too, but it breaks up the sculpt, so it looks pretty bad when you do that. But yeah, real nice. And I just realized I could bring in my X plus 30 centimeter Gigan figure. So this is probably the most accurate Gigan in my collection, and he is going to have a nice companion piece with this guy. Surprisingly, their size is pretty close. This guy is not much smaller than this guy. They're both quite bulky figures, so that's real sweet. There we go. A nice little row of Showa Gigans now. We could start off with the, the big guy here, then the Marmot, then the Bandai, and then this guy here. And I used to have like this little tiny Gashapon Showa Gigan, so I could bring that in, but I, just, I have no idea where that is right now. But yeah, real cool. Let's let's uh, bring bring both of them in together. So, of course, the Final Wars one is really huge, even compared to this guy here. Yeah. I've actually got a X-Plus Final Wars Gigan ordered. It's a broken figure, so I got a real good deal on it, so I'm going to repair it. Sculpt and mold some extra pieces to fix it up, and then I'll have, like, another Final Wars Gigan in my collection. We can compare this guy to it, so that'll be fun. I'm still waiting on it. It's coming from the US, so it's going to be a little while. But yeah, real cool. I recommend these things. These ones are really difficult to pick up, like I said, these Marmot figures. But uh, for one, they're a really good investment. These things don't seem to go down in value. They cost a few hundred dollars from what I've seen, these things, typically. Whether you're actually going to be able to sell it or not, I don't know. But um, that's what that's what the prices that people seem to sell these things for online go for. And they're just real cool looking figures. I love the aesthetic of these. They've got a great size to them. They just feel chunky and they really pop on your shelf. And I, I, do, I am a fan of sort of stylized figures as well. So these are real cool because of that. There we go. I can, again, bring in all three marmots. Look at them. <laughs> My little collection is growing. Sweet. Oh. They, they also should come with these tags, by the way, because they normally would arrive in like a, a clear plastic bag with a tag at the top. So this is the original tag from the uh, Godzilla 2000 one. So there's, there's that one's tag. Unfortunately, yeah, it doesn't have the bag in it or anything, but hey, at least it's got the tag, which is sweet. These two, I guess the the person threw away the tag, which I, for the life of me, have no idea why someone would do that. But nonetheless, it's what they did. Ah, look at this. Some nice articulation points here. This chainsaw can actually spin. He can move his arm back and forth quite a bit. So his legs can kind of awkwardly bend, so you're probably not going to get any proper steps or kicks out of him, which is a shame, but his head can also swivel a bit. So if you did want to kind of do some stop motion animation with this guy, you can get a, you know, a little thing going with his arms at least. 
tail, I guess, wobbles. So, it is what it is. Before we close up, I just wanted to take a look at this little tiny figure that they sent. Because uh, th there was this, like, random bonus figure that they had. And look at that. It's just a little, really, really simple, hard vinyl hollow figure of Gigan done in bright yellow. Little chibi figure. Real cute, real simple. It's a nice little addition. I definitely didn't uh, get this set just for this guy. <laughs> but it is always nice to see this thing. Does that say Marmot too? Let me have a look. Uh, it is a Marmot. Oh, Tohoku 1972. Yeah. Little figure from 2003 of the 70, 72 Gigan. Ah. That's kind of funny. I did not know Marmot made little thingies like this. Granted, it's far less impressive than, you know. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this little unboxing of these Marmot Gigan figures. If you want me to do like a more full in-depth review of these or compare them with something else or whatnot, do let me know in the comments below. And I hope to see you in one of my future videos. But until then, may all your vinyl be irradiated vinyl. Over and out. Thank <laughs> you.